Hi everybody, Chris Souter here with MLC CAD Systems. This video today is really an update to a video that I made back in 2017 that is posted to our YouTube channel called Managing the Engineering Change Process with SolidWorks PDM. In the video itself, I show how we can leverage the XML file format for an engineering change process inside of SOLIDWORKS PDM. I received a lot of positive feedback and I know that there's a number of customers that have adopted a process very similar or the same after reviewing the video that I created. This file is still on our YouTube channel and um, uh, within that video I show you know basically how that works and I give you some of the reasons why I chose the XML format. So if you wanted to run over and take a look at that, it is a good video to, uh, to review. Now, one area of feedback that I've received from customers is in regards to how we would view the history of ECNs for our CAD files over a period of time. My recommendation for this has been to either use the Where Used or the Contents tab within SOLIDWORKS PDM, or if you want to um, have a little bit more uh, more visibility, you could use a cell on the data card and manually add ECN numbers to CAD file data cards or CAD file names to the ECN data cards. The downside of both of these methods is that you have to be logged into PDM in order to, to basically view that information. So the main reason for my video today is because SOLIDWORKS has, has provided us with additional tools in 2018 and I believe I found a great way to help us with this uh, particular scenario. So what's happened is that SOLIDWORKS has added the ability to manage the revision table in 2018, which gives us an, a great additional way of recording our ECN history directly on the drawing sheet itself. So you don't necessarily need to be logged into PDM. If you're looking at the drawing, you've got all the uh, revision and ECN history that you, that you need. So what I'd like to do now is just quickly demonstrate how this would work. Uh, I'm actually using SOLIDWORKS and PDM 2019. Um, the process itself is uh, pretty simple. I've uh, listed these out as six steps and uh, we'll actually go through this process right now. So jumping back into my PDM vault, uh, I have a couple of simple files that I'm going to use for this example you will see that they are at a, a state right now called released for manufacturing. It's just a simple part file and a drawing. Now the preview of the part file, you can see I have a revision table on the front of this drawing document. So the first step is to simply change the state of these files and send them for an engineering change. If you're familiar with PDM, you'll know there is an option to bring the reference documents along with the parent document. We don't necessarily need the old ECNs, so I'm going to uncheck those and just basically send for ECN. So we'll move those files back and you'll see they will go to a state called WIP under change. Now this is a, a bit of a user preference at this point. So I have my ECOs all going into one folder and they're going into this ECN folder right here. You can have them pretty much go anywhere. And if you've seen the earlier video, you'll know that I'm using a template to create these XML documents. It's uh, serializing each one. And uh, basically there is an input form that requires us to add information about the ECN itself. So let's go ahead and just create something here. So we'll, we'll just say make uh, let's see, shaft longer. Reason, uh, it's too short. All right, we'll give a real good detailed reason for that. Nothing is being displaced, so we'll just go ahead and create that document. All right, so that generates our ECN for us. So all we're going to do here is simply create that file. Now this is where the process changes a little bit as per my previous video in 2017. So what I did in the past is I pasted the CAD files on top of the ECN file. So they became references to the ECN itself and then I pushed the ECN through the approval process. Now 
you will see in just a moment the reason why I'm doing this, but I'm actually going to copy the ECN this time. And I'm going to put the ECN as a reference on top of the CAD file. So in order to do that, I need to check out the CAD files. So we'll check out the part and the drawing. And then we'll simply paste that as a reference. The engineering change told us that we needed to make the, the shaft longer. So let's go ahead and open that file in SolidWorks and make those changes. Okay, the first thing you'll notice when we open the drawing is we now have a revision table in the top right hand corner um, and we are required to make changes to, to the shaft size right here. So the job that we need to do first of all is to add another row to the revision table and then we'll make the actual modifications themselves. So using SolidWorks PDM it gives us the ability to add our flag note. Now it leaves it as just a star for the revision for the time being because the revision itself is actually controlled through the workflow. Let's make our change to the dimension that needs to be updated. Go ahead and just increase the length of that shaft to 65. Okay, and for the time being that completes everything that we need to do in the, uh, the drawing. So our next job is to simply check the drawing back into PDM. Uh, prior to doing that, I'm going to add the ECN number. So this is where I've got the additional cell for my ECNs in my rev table. And I'll just add the ECN number that's going to be associated with that revision. Now we'll check back in. We'll add a little comment here so the history is updated. So. That's there in the history and you will notice in the check-in dialog it's actually going to check in the XML file as well because that is now a child of the drawing itself so we'll check all three of those in the next thing for us to do is follow the approval process and push these files through the approval process which is going to release them to manufacturing and create the new revision of the file using SolidWorks PDM and the revision table capabilities in SolidWorks PDM, the revision will update as the file is released. The description of the revision actually happens when we transition the file through the next workflow transition. So here we're going to submit for approval and I'm going to add a comment. Now this comment that goes into this box right here is going to go into that description field right there. And that is the way that the revision table works with PDM 2018 and above. Okay, so the comment is going to be updated shaft size, if I can spell it correctly, per ECN 21. Right, the file will go from whip to pending approval, and you can see it added the, the description to the revision block. I'm following a pretty simple workflow, so the next step for this one is basically to uh, release these documents. There's just one simple approval process. Okay, so we'll go ahead and release them. Now, as you can see, the revision table updates, revision E is added, and the, uh, the sign off and the date is also added to the revision table. So the steps in the process are pretty straightforward. The process is itself pretty easy to set up. Um, once that is complete, um, we, we are done and we've got all the information we need in the, uh, in the drawing file itself. So the good thing about using this method, which is the ECN um, and the rev table uh, using the XML format, is that now we have all the information we need in PDM, which we already had, but also on the drawing sheet itself. So on the face of the drawing, if anybody on the shop floor wants to see how it got to Rev D, Rev E, then uh, they have a little table in the top right hand corner that uh, gives them that information. 
And the beautiful thing for us is that this is managed electronically. Um, so everything is updated in the, uh, the files themselves. Gives us traceability, accountability, and visibility for everybody. Okay, so I want to thank you for your time today in reviewing this video. Um, if you have any additional questions, feel free to get a hold of me or my support team. Uh, again, I am Chris Souter with MLC CAT Systems, and our support team email address is on the screen right now. Feel free to reach out with any questions that you may have.